Oh, I need to find the clicker. Okay, got it. Well, good morning and uh, welcome everyone. It is fantastic to be here with this community today. Uh, you know, it uh, continues to be a really, really exciting time for all of us in the tech industry. The pace of growth, the rapid pace of growth we are seeing right now is way more than ever before with hundreds of billions of new devices being connected at the edge and millions and trillions of dollars of new revenue being generated influenced through artificial intelligence. There is absolutely no doubt that advancements in technology are having a profound impact across every industry and every sector. And the only primary question that now remains in front of us is how are we going to leverage this massive volume of data and these amazing capabilities that exist at our fingertips to help our companies and our communities transform. You know, this transition, these opportunities, are not only powered by the change or the, by the move to the intelligent, scalable cloud, but also a profound change that we're seeing in application development towards the intelligent edge. At the Spark and AI Summit last year, I spoke about this foundational change in the application paradigm that we're seeing as new applications, new workloads are being built towards the intelligent cloud and the intelligent edge. Since then, we worked very closely with you, this community, and our customers to deeply understand what it takes to build these groundbreaking new experiences to serve our customers using this new paradigm. So let's double click into that and understand how these end-to-end -end solutions get built and what Microsoft is doing to make it easier for our customers to build solutions with this new paradigm. You know, enabling intelligent cloud and intelligent edge solutions requires a completely new category of distributed and connected applications. These cloud and edge services are built as a unified single solution, even though they are run in a distributed fashion. And when they are run in a distributed fashion, they take advantage of the cloud scale and the edge locality. For the portions of the application in the solution that runs on the edge, they're able to take advantage of the local contextual insights and can work in connected and disconnected states. You know, as we've been working with our customers to build out these solutions, uh, there's been interesting learnings for us. One of the key learnings is it, it's not just enough to build out these endpoints for these edge devices, you know, endpoints in the cloud, connect them together, and there you go, your application is built out. What we really need is a comprehensive end-to-end -end hybrid platform that spans the cloud and the edge, a consistent application model that covers all the endpoints, holistic security, a single way of managing identity controls, and finally, and probably the most important, super simplified manageability that manages both your cloud and edge uh, endpoints. Just given the number of, or uh, the high volume of endpoints that we see are getting built. You know, we've been working very hard uh, to build all these capabilities inside of Azure and our edge solutions. And we've also been working very hard to bring all the latest innovation in artificial intelligence to this new paradigm around the intelligent cloud and the intelligent edge. For example, using Azure services, you can actually combine the data that exists in the cloud along with all the data that exists on the edge to build out your machine learning models and then deploy them at scale to all your certified edge devices, which is a massive number that we're working on with several vendors. Using the contextual insights that the portion of the application that runs on the edge, you can leverage more relevant data to train your machine learning models, which we've seen produces much, much better results. So building on these capabilities, we're very excited to make three uh, big announcements today, which hopefully highlight our deep commitment to the open source community. The first is around Azure Machine Learning supporting MLflow. So Microsoft is going to participate in the MLflow community, and we're very, very excited about that. More specifically, the open source MLflow APIs will be supported on our flagship service for machine learning, Azure Machine Learning. The second announcement is the availability of managed MLflow and managed Delta Lake, the announcements that you just heard uh, Ali make uh, in the previous session. They're already available on Azure Databricks today, and we're super excited about that. And finally, uh, something that I personally feel very, very happy about is we are bringing .NET support to Apache Spark. 
And this, for the millions of .NET developers out there, is a fantastic thing because they can use you know, the programming language of their choice, the development environment of their choice, the tooling of their choice to leverage the power of Apache Spark, including the Delta Lake now, to build out big data applications, data science workloads, et cetera. You know, none of these innovations, frankly, would matter if they didn't really help serve our customers and do something valuable for them. And this is one of the reasons I'm very excited to share three stories with you today, where these customers are already leveraging the power of the intelligent cloud and intelligent edge to serve their customers and produce amazing business results. The first one is Anheuser-Busch, which is a very, very popular brewery. And they've built out a solution based on uh, AI and IoT using RFID tech to track every bottle that gets produced in the brewery, gets sent to the wholesaler, and finally the retailer. And they did this to highly optimize this process while ensuring that their retail outlets never run out of stock. This is very, very important for them. And as they're collecting data through the solution, they're able to learn a lot around the demands that happen in various regions of the world. It's a fantastic story of how they've optimized this. Schneider Electric is another great example. They're breaking new ground and creating new methods to proactively monitor their pumps in real time using predictive analytics. They basically deployed these predictive models on the edge devices, in this case, the pumps themselves, to be able to track when things go wrong and shut down these pumps. Some of these are massive devices. And to protect these pumps from long-term damage to the machinery, and also, by the way, land up protecting the environment in, in this particular case. It's really, really great to see. And finally, AccuWeather, as some of you may know, is one of the world's leading service providers of weather prediction. They collect a massive amount of you know, weather data from the edge devices and are using that to create custom weather prediction models for individual regions, which help the local community you know, plan out their lives, protect their businesses, and finally keep themselves safe. You know, to me personally, though, one example that resonates a lot is seeing AI. This is a project that actually has been built. It's an intelligent application that got developed by Microsoft Research, and it essentially built out to help the visually impaired navigate their day. To see how seeing AI is built, I'd like to invite Shivani and Mark on stage, where they'll show how the data and AI services in Azure are being used to build seeing AI. Mark, Shivani. Thank you, Rohan. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Mark Hamilton, and I'm a software engineer on Microsoft's Applied AI team. Hi, Today guys. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Today, I'd like to show you how we can use Azure Databricks to build a real-time classification engine to help those with visual impairments. Hi, everyone. I'm Shivani Patel. I'm a program manager on the Azure Machine Learning Platform team. And I'm going to show you how to take Mark's project and turn it into a CI-CD pipeline using Azure DevOps. For those with visual impairments, it's incredibly difficult to work with currency. You know, you can't really determine the denomination of a bill from just holding it or feeling it. That's why we'd like to use machine learning to help solve this problem. One of the most famous examples that comes to mind is that Ray, Ray Charles, one of the world's greatest pianists, even refused to accept anything but singles when he was paid for playing at a nightclub, just because it's so difficult in order to determine what kind of currency you're actually working with. The way that we've started tackling this problem at Microsoft is through crowdsourcing. We've knocked on all of our collaborators' doors and asked them to send their craziest photos of currency in the wild. Unfortunately, you have to be careful about how to word this email, because the photos we got were a little wilder than anticipated. All right. Now, we know not all of our coworkers are lazy and have all this time to create these crazy pictures. Yeah, so if we want to skip the social engineering and go straight to the engineering engineering, we can actually pull a fully labeled classification data set straight out of the cloud using the Azure Cognitive Services on Spark. What these are are an open source integration that we're announcing that integrates all of the Azure Cognitive Services directly into the Spark ML distributed computing library. This way, you can embed cloud intelligence without changing your existing pipelines. We can take a look here where we'll use Bing Image Search as a Spark ML transformer to transform a data frame of queries into a data frame of images of those queries. We can then apply it four times, one for each of our denominations. And very rapidly, 
we can get data frames that are fully labeled for classification. We can stitch these together, split them into a training and testing set, and start building our machine learning model. Today, we'll use a deep convolutional network called MobileNet, which is optimized for evaluation on low-powered devices such as iPhones and Androids. While this cooks, we can take a look at the full end-to-end -end workflow that we've created. We start with just a verbal description of what we're looking for, namely each denomination, and we can use the Azure Cognitive Services on Spark to pull these into a fully labeled classification data set without any legwork on our part. We can then pump these through TensorFlow on Spark to get deep features that are ready for classification with SparkML's distributed logistic regression. Finally, we can use Azure Machine Learning and Spark Serving to deploy this to a variety of backends. Now, how do we know that the model you created is actually accurate? We don't want to repeat it last time. That's true. I have been known to push garbage into the cloud. So before we press the big red button, let's take a look at how this model actually performs. As you can see, we get a perf uh, accuracy of around 77%, which is fairly good, considering that this is two minutes into the demo and we haven't labeled a single thing ourselves. Once we're satisfied with our model, we can register it with Azure Machine Learning. This lets us track our model across a variety of different experiments and also helps us share our model with our collaborators across the company. What's more, when you hook into Azure Machine Learning, you get one of access to one of the fastest RESTful Spark deployments in the West. We're excited to announce that at this Spark Summit, we've worked hard to reduce the latency of Azure Machine Learning Serving by a factor of over 100 by integrating it with our open source framework, Spark Serving. Spark Serving aims to add a new pillar of unification to Spark's APIs, that not only do you get batch and streaming APIs in the same kind of language, you now also get RESTful Serving. We can go ahead and kick off one of these servers and deploy it to Azure Container Instances which is effectively serverless Docker containers on Azure. All right, can I try it out? Yeah, we can take a look at one of the apps we made earlier. Great. Ooh, the Saruman one, that's a tough one. <laughs> hey, we got $10. Now this is really fantastic, but our end goal here isn't to run a notebook. We want to operationalize a model and deploy it out to an app in production so our users can use this currency detection model. So how can we make sure that our users are getting the most current model? We can leverage Azure DevOps to create an automated pipeline to test and deploy our models. So let's switch the screen here. Great. So what I've done is imported all my code to operationalize my model, including all of Mark's scripts. Next, what I did was create a continuous integration pipeline. So here, I'm basically importing all my Azure machine learning credentials so I can track all the assets and artifacts I've created in this process. Next, I'm going to run Mark's code. And since I don't necessarily trust it, I'm going to test this model in test, test it against a model already in production. Once I'm happy with that quality, I'm going to package the model. And this will trigger a continuous deployment pipeline. Now, what this will do is take that package model, deploy it into a test environment, run through some quality gates that I've set, and then deploy it out into production. This is really cool, but I really like working in the notebook as a data scientist. Is it really hard for me to hook into all of the CI CD pipelines? No, it's actually incredibly simple. So what you can do is have a Git integration here, change up your code, update it, and then it'll be updated in your project and DevOps. And what's really great about this is that we know data and code is changing over time. So for example, Canada introduced a $10 bill. And so we want to take in that data, ingest it, you can run through your notebook, update your scripts, do a git commit, and kick off these pipelines again. This is really awesome. Using Azure Machine Learning, Azure DevOps, and Azure Databricks, it's never been easier to deploy a state-of-the-art model to both the cloud and the edge. Thank you very much, and back to you, Rowan. <laughs>
Rohan near set zero faces. Take picture. But take picture. Seeing AI. Screenshot. Button. Edit and share screenshots. <laughs> Hi, Sakib. Hi. How are you? I'm great, Menu. thank you. Button. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Shakib. Hi, I'm a software engineer at Microsoft. I'm from London and have been at the company for about 13 years. But a few years ago, had this great opportunity to take my passion for accessibility and artificial intelligence and bring them together to such that we came up with the Seeing AI app, which is now helping thousands of people around the world in every part of their lives. Well, thank you so much for coming all the way from UK to showcase the work, the great work you're doing with Seeing AI. So I saw a little bit of you're trying to take you know, a picture and sort of navigate through the app. Can you tell us what was happening? Yeah, so as I was walking along, I wanted to use the face identification feature of Seeing AI, and it heard, you heard it say Rohan was a few feet away. And that's really useful in daily life. So I use it, but for example, there's a teacher who uses it with the phone pointed at the classroom door. He can recognize as the students enter the classroom. And of course, now he knows which students are creeping in late. <laughs> that's really great to see. So you saw Mark and Shivani built out the, you know, the currency model. How is that used in Seeing AI? How does that help you? Yeah, that was one of the a big requests we had when we first launched the feature. We heard from customers that recognizing US dollars was a bit difficult because all the notes, are, all the bills are the same size and not easy to differentiate. So when I'm visiting here, for example, I'm going to use it in my hotel room in the morning to figure, uh, make piles of bills and put them in different parts of my wallet so that when I go out, it's easy for me to uh, figure out which note is it which, and I'm not holding up the line in the shop. I can just show you one moment. Channel, person, currency. So I switch the channel to tell it that I'm interested in currencies. And let's just pull out a bill from my pocket and hold it under the camera. Five US dollars. Cool. So. <laughs> And let's just try another one. 20 US dollars. And it's a 20. So it seems to be working too well, which, you know, for a demo, oh, we should try something harder. <laughs> so, oh no. Let's just crumple up this note and make sure it's totally unrecognizable and see if it's still going to work. OK, maybe I'm being a bit too mean. <laughs> this is what you like. Is this really going to work? Well, okay. at least we know it's real I, code. It, no, okay. So, the, but it has a, this is the power of running a deep neural network on the device. Maybe I'm too rigorous at the crumpling today, but it can actually recognize things in different orientations, and even if it's got crinkles in it and so forth. So, that's really powerful. Oh, well, that's fantastic to see. Any last things you want to share about the Seeing AI app that's close to your heart, Shakib? I could show you the. The latest thing that we released was the ability to explore a photo by touch. So you can put a photo onto a glass panel on your smartphone and then get a haptic and audio experience. So let me just pull up a photo which I took yesterday. Menu, menu button, close, browse photo, button, browse photo, screenshot, ten date, processing, date, date, share, button, screenshot, one face. Photo, December 2000, screenshot, screenshot, photo, December 2017. Oh, one second, let me just pull up. Screen, screenshot, 10.03 a.m., one face, a person, scene, scene, a person riding a bicycle. So a person riding a bike, that's the latest image captioning capabilities we have. Scene, a peak, but if we explore it, delete, explore photo, landscape. Charge port to the right. Processing. And if I put my person finger down. Contains text. It tells me that there's a person in this photo under my finger. And I'm tire. Near. And there's a tire. Interesting. Bicycle. Bicycle wheel. I'm just moving my finger around. And I'm feeling little bumps on the haptics 
of the phone. Bicycle. Person. Contains text. Possible text. Processing. Per fire de San Francisco. Fire department. Interesting. So it's really giving me a rich idea of what's here. Sackett, 33-year-old man with black hair looking happy. <laughs> so this is really the power of artificial intelligence. The work that we all do as en software engineers, as data scientists. I really look forward to what's coming up next, and the possibilities are just so exciting. Thank you so much, Saki. Really, really appreciate you going there. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there you have it. You know, at Microsoft, our mission is to empower every person and every organization on this planet to achieve more. You know, all the work that we do in building products, services, all the investments in our research, all that aspires to creating an opportunity for each and every one of us. We believe it's our collective responsibility as a community to use our creativity to actually do this beyond this mission of making opportunities, creating value for each and every human on this earth. I'd like to play a video that showcases some of these projects and the impact that they're happening across the world. Please play the video. There are barriers to communication everywhere, but I think it's time we look at the barriers as opportunities to reach out to everyone. Soundscape fills in a lot of the mental map as you move. Approaching intersection. You can just put it in your pocket and go. We see technology as a way to give back what ALS has taken away. There's no better feeling than to hear a child say something that they've wanted to say and the look on their face after they've been able to say it. When it's reading, I see spaces between the words and it's easier to focus on. Now that I have my phone, I can see exactly what was said and that's been a huge help to me. The system is learning as it goes and the accuracy has improved tremendously. Dès les personnes avec autisme à communiquer, il y a des images. Va t'habiller et te brosser les dents. Je crois que ça vraiment, ça aide à recréer du lien. My wife and I are totally blind, and we have a three-year-old son that's in preschool. He can see, but his parents can't. Artificial intelligence is beginning to have an impact on the lives of people with disabilities, but it's it's only going to grow. Thank you, and I hope you all have a great conference. <laughs>